Esky is the software that comes with the book, downloaded from the companion website. There are three Esky files. These are standard Excel workbooks. The important point is to download and then save to your local hard disk before you open any of these files in Excel. Here's the first of the ESCII intro files for chapters 3 to 8 and a list here of all the pages in this file that you get to by using these uh, tabs along the bottom. So let's go to the first one, Describe, and here we have a data set with some labels here, the pen laptop, the unit is transcription percent, and this is the laptop group. A good strategy when looking at a whole ESCII page is to look at the red numbers, red 1, red 2, red 3, and when in the book we talk about, uh, well, near red 3, well, that's anywhere in this coloured area labelled by red 3. And you can see some pop-outs when you hover the mouse near a red triangle with some uh, helpful explanations. So here's our data set and uh, n equals 31 and here we have 31 points in a stacked dot plot each dot obviously representing one data value and up at the top we have a frequency histogram which summarizes this distribution of data points in a series of bins across here now before i do anything else i need to enable macros macros are little programs that do the work when we click on buttons or controls. So I need to enable that. In your version of uh, Excel, you might have to do it somewhat differently, but local advice or using help, you should be able easily to enable macros, essential for these things to work. So uh, a frequency histogram, one thing we can change is the number of bins. So with this spinner, if you click here, increase from eight to nine, 9 to 10, 10 to 11, and of course the stack dot plot doesn't change, but this frequency histogram summary of the distribution does change. You can uh, delete some points if you wish, select them and press the delete key, and this updates immediately. You can type in some values, let's type in say 15 and press enter, another point's added and say 22, enter, another point is added in both the frequency histogram and in the dot plot. Now if we wanted to return to that same data set you can scroll right and here we've got some preloaded data sets and I think we had the laptop for this so press that button, replace any previous data, yes and so here we are back to where we started with that data. With a data set, we would like to summarize it. We'd like some descriptive statistics. First, the general location of the data set along the x-axis. And the obvious first one would be the mean. And we can, well, let's, before we mark it, let's eyeball. Where do you think the mean would be along here? Roughly 15, I suppose, maybe a whisker less. Let's try it. And there it is, just below 15. Think of this as a balance point, a fulcrum, with these uh, heavy balls balancing along there. So clearly the balls right out at the ends have quite a lot of moment, quite a lot of leverage about this point. So they're very influential on the mean. The other uh, main summary statistic for uh, location is the median. And here it is marked like this and it's positioned so that 50% of the data points lie to its left and 50% to its right. After location, we'd like to know something about spread, and the, main, um, the, the most common measure of spread is the standard deviation. Now, the deviation of an individual data point is the distance between that point and the mean. So this point has a positive deviation, this one a negative deviation, and strangely, for the standard deviation, what we do is square all these deviations, add them up, divide by n minus 1 to get the variance, which is a bit of a tricky thing to think about or to picture because it's in squared units. If x happened to be in centimetres, then variance of x would be in square centimetres, centimetres squared. But then we quickly take the square root to get back to standard deviation. 
And because of the squaring, the extreme points have a lot of influence on the standard deviation, tend to increase the standard deviation. A bit hard to eyeball it, but let's think I'm going to guess it's from about there up to about there, so maybe about six, something like that. Let's see, click here for standard deviation, and there we have, um, or oh, we can turn on values, oh, 7.3, so I underestimate it, as I often do, but there is a mark, one standard deviation above the mean, and one standard deviation below. I can go further and turn on Z lines, or Z lines, which mark intervals zero at the mean, one standard deviation above, two, three, etc. One below, two below. So this is Z or Z minus one, minus two, and so on. And you can see that here, uh, all the data points lie within two standard deviations of the mean, except these two out there. And that's a pretty common sort of pattern. So that's it for our first look at Describe. Thank you for listening.